Hey everyone, Paul Ice Sam. Welcome to part three of our Alpha Models 124th Audi RS4 Avant. So, we're going to get this finished today. We had a lot of footage uh, for part two, which overspilled to part three. Um, and we're going to get this done today. We are. And it's going to look absolutely phenomenal. It's there, look. Um, so it's a finishing touches today. We're going to get it all built up uh, and assembled, and hopefully churn out another good-looking car. Spoiler alert: I think it looks great. But don't don't skip to the end. Watch the video. Watch the video for me. Uh, as always, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up as well. And please leave a comment. I do appreciate everyone that takes the time to leave a comment, and it does spare me on with the builds. And uh, should you wish to support the channel as a patron, me a buy me a coffee link and a PayPal me link there as well. You can get two week early access by becoming a patron. So it's something to worth consider. And you also keep these videos going because without that support, I couldn't do this and all the live streams I do as well. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get straight on with the video. So we're back at the exact point we left off in part two. So we just literally cleaned all the body up after polishing. Dried the roll off, and what we're going to do now is paint all the interior in Vallejo model colour black. So you could mask and spray this should you wish, but you're not going to see this. It's just a matter of course of getting all the body um, interior the same colour as the rest of the interior. So it's thinned with a couple of drops of water. We've got a nice thick Tamiya HF flat brush. And we're just going to round and carefully paint everything inside. So we're going to go right up to all those parts we masked and sprayed on the exterior. We'll remove any excess because there are different colours if it goes over and onto that paint. Uh, but for now, it's just a step that needs doing and it'll tie it all together. Now we have some parts to paint on the exterior. So the rear load cover for the boot lid on this um, was gloss. We don't want it gloss at all. We want it to match the interior. So we've got some LP5 semi-gloss black from Tamiya and the radar sensor things on the front. Um, they've got blacks around and I want to paint the black in the center as the real car has So we just carefully mask these up used a bit of paper as a, a masking kind of shield And with all that masked up remove it and there we go job done it Doesn't have to be a perfect mask job on the front Just need to do those centers because the parts we painted and primed in part two will cover these so no drama at all um, but yeah it's a necessary step. Like I said, we're getting to the end of the build now. Lots of little niggly snags and jobs to do. Um, but they're all going to build into the, the larger picture. And there we go. Some perfect mask in there. And then the back end. Be careful over this carbon. I know you've 2 k it. But we be careful over decals, even over 2 k And there we go. All the masks. You can see that partial shelf cover, low cover, is looking great now. And we're going to install our dashboard. So... Some strategic blobs of our creative pen from Loctite. It's a very thick gel glue. And we're going to pop our dashboard in place. It does have a little bit of wiggle room from left to right to centerize it. Because obviously we've got to get our door cards in. So make sure you put it in the center. Just wiggle it around and put it about roughly where you can conceive is central. And then some dabs of glue inside. And then we're off up our door card. It will push all the way forward. It kind of slots in place. There's a little hook at the top. Uh, and then push it up to the top of the door as well. Same on the other side. You'll see where it lines up. It's kind of self-explanatory when you're putting it in. But there we go. And then going to slot our interior in. Make sure it all fits, which it does. It's looking good. Like I say, it's a sea of black. It is a very bland, boring interior. But it's perfect for this car. And it looks good. It still looks good. It's a very interesting, um, beautiful interior. But it's typical German functionality. Now I've got our under tray here. This is one of the other bits I don't like about these kits. These screws that these screw in place with. It's a bit crap. It really is. They're not countersunk. They stick out a bit. And then they're a bit cumbersome to do. But it is what it is. It's what we get. You can glue them if you want. But it's not as secure or as simple. So I'm just going to drill some pilot holes here first. So I'm using this tray as a template with the holes already in. I'm using my battery powered drill. And then with a larger drill bit, we're going to enlarge these nice and carefully. As you can see, to accommodate our screw size, we've got a drill bit that's just a hair's breadth thinner than our drill uh, screws. 
And I'm just going to clear the hole and widen it a little bit more with our pin vise. There we go. And then just a quick test fit of the screw. And you could literally see the screw screw into place through the resin. It was that close to the edge. Um, it, it's definitely not my favorite point about these kits. It's a little bit sketchy to do. Right, we've got the interior kind of placed temporarily for now. We're going to glue in all our wheel hubs. So we've set all these up in part two. They're all ready to go. They are handed and they are front and rear. So make sure you get the calipers to face in the right way on the front and back. So the fronts point in, as do the backs. And the wheels are handed. We haven't glued the wheels on yet, so it's not as vital important a point. With all those hubs glued in place, we can gently and carefully screw the screws in. It looks like I'm applying all the pressure. I'm not. They're going in really easy. And there we go. Like I say, I'm not impressed by those screws at all. They're a bit crap. Uh, ride height's looking good on the wheels. Very happy. And it sits pretty straight on the bench as well, which is good. And then our radar mount thing surrounds, whatever they're called. Radar sensors, I think that's the word, isn't it? They just go and place a little bit of uh, glue and glaze from deluxe materials. I definitely didn't lick that cotton bud. You know me, I don't like cotton buds. <laughs> just a rumour. And uh, yeah, that's always in place. And the rear lights, quite surprising these, they just clicked in place. They're not supposed to. But they did. No glue required. And then on the front grille, a couple of dabs of our Loctite pen. Then we get our grill and slot it in place. So we got a big menacing mouth of a grill. And then our rear light lenses, these are dried now. We're going to go around the edge with our Sharpie to give the uh, impression of the, the rubber surround of the lens itself. Nice little tip, it's an old tip. Uh, but it does work well. Well, we're doing 20 clear parts to go on the exterior. Lights or indicators and what have you. And then a little bit of PVA based glue and glaze. We leave this to go tacky on the lid. It goes super sticky. And it gets good purchase as soon as you put it on. We're just going to pop these in place. We have some little carbon bits of... Tr well... Carbon decal bits of trim to go in front of these, which you'll see later. I don't think I actually show me putting them on, but they will magically appear in a bit. And let's get it in place, get a cotton bud, definitely don't lick it, and then wipe off any excess of the glue. Beautiful thing about using a glue and glaze, it wipes off. It does wipe off. And that's both of those done. The exhausts are getting CA glued in place. So I'm glad I did these in silver. It adds a bit of interest to the back. So I dab a glue in there, line them up and you're good to go and then on the front lights we've got some photo etch to apply so we've got some odorless glue from bob smith the uh pe is already cut off and cleaned up i'm just going to line it up and pop it in place like so so while i've got you here i'm applying these bits of pe is there anything different you'd like to see me do in my videos who's paying attention here if you are paying attention number one say yes i was paying attention and number two is there anything you'd like me to change in the videos light lenses going in there as well these are clear resin uh they're putting with glue and glaze again yeah is there anything you'd like me to change on the videos are you unhappy the way i'm doing things should i change things up do i show things in detail enough because you know me i don't like to to muck around and show you know three hours of priming i like to get straight to the point and if we don't need to show it, we don't need to show it. Um, you know, do I show too much? Do I show too little? Is there anything you'd like to see in particular? I do have some plans of some videos. We're going to chat about it in a bench update, which will come soon. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Is there anything you need, think you need switching up? And did you watch this bit? Comment. Comment at the end. Let's see who's watching at 8 minutes 39 seconds. So a bit of glue in the front to hold the front lens in. A little bit tricky, this to get in place um yeah they are they're not the best fitment and then the light lens over the top we're going to glue in uh with glue and glaze as well and there's a little bit of trim to go in the edge as well which is just popped in with a bit of CA glue nice and carefully so repeat that for both sides and then the radar sensors have these little uh clear resin bits 
uh, which we're going to CA glue in place as well. Tricky little bugs to get in these. Kept sticking to the bloody tweezers. We got there in the end, though. And then the wheels. So using our Bob Smiths, we got to pop the wheels on. Make sure they're handed um, the correct way. You look at the instructions, just see exactly what I mean. Move them where you want them. I want them so they just show the calipers as like a um, yeah an accent, and then just check everything sits right, they sit where you want them, and all lined up. And there we go. Before we glue the front ones in, we're going to paint the front wheel well black. So using the same model color black, thin to a drop of water, brushed in place. We're just going to paint the inside of this. Again, you could mask it and paint it. But to be honest, on parts like this, you're not going to see. It's a little bit of a waste of time. You know, it's just brush paint it. There's no airs and graces with me sometimes. If you're not going to see it, why waste the time doing it? That's how I look at it. And there we go. All the wheels are glued in place now. And we're on to the most difficult part, in my opinion, of these kits. The clear parts. So today, I put some double-sided tape on to hold them. We're taking them off the back. We do not want to touch the other side at all. We're going to have a little bit of a test fit. There's eight separate pieces on this. Um, they actually all went on pretty well. So with a test fit, we're going to pop it back roughly in place on the sheet. We're going to go our deluxe materials. No, it's not. Our Bob Smith's odorless CA glue. I'm using a cocktail stick. We're just going to put a few dabs across one side to begin with. We'll line it up, get one side glued in place, get that all in position, held properly, and then concentrate on the other side. Don't find you need any in the middle at all. Just either side will do for the most part. Um, but just go slow here. Don't get the excess glue on. You don't need loads of it. Uh, and like I say, get it all in, line it up. So this masking tape holder works well. So we're going to line it up at the top, just get it in place. Then line up one side, make sure the other side lines up. There we go. Once we're happy, we're going to have some of our pointy cotton buds. Hold it in place. Give me a bit of a contortionist now. And hold three things with one finger. You ready? I think I show it. I might not. And then we're going to just grab one at the top. And just hold it for a second. They get a little bit of purchase. Make sure it's lined up where we want it. And then just rub down with one cotton bud until we get the glue to grab and then we can lift up the other side gently once that's glued in apply a little bit more ca glue and exactly the same with this side just push it in place heat up the cotton bud hold it and then rub it in place with the other one the simple to do it is the most stressful part of the kit because if it goes wrong it'll go wrong big time but they do have a protective cover on this side that we're on now so that will protect it from any glue or scratches for now Leave that on for as long as possible. I know it's tempting to peel them off. I've done it before in the past. But leave that protected cover on right till the very end. And just hold the glue for a second. The Bob Smith's Odorless does take a while to grab. And that's a beautiful part of it. You can move things around. It is quite forgiving. These windows are thankfully quite flat. So they're one of the easiest ones I've done. And then we just rinse and repeat for the front and the sides as well. Just be very careful. If you do get a fingerprint on the inside, get a clean cloth like me. I stupidly touch the inside there like an idiot. Like, oh, you moron. So we don't want any fingerprints on the inside. Or we have to take all the car back apart again. So look at where the fingerprint is because I am an absolute muppet. We got a brand new clean cloth and just gently rub the fingerprint away. And there we go. Once we're happy with that, we can pop it in place. Same procedures before, procedures before. Get it in place, get that one side lined up. Don't drop it like that, that's the worst thing you can do. Confident, steady hands is what you need here. There we go. Get one side in, hold it, make sure it lines up with the other side and do exactly what we did on the rear. And then for all the side windows, exactly the same process. Get them all in now these all went in great no bother at all the only one i had any problem with was the rear c pillar quarter whatever you want to call them glass where i know there was trim to go around them and i assume the rear piece had a bit of trim to cover it and i put glue basically where it wasn't needed which is on that left hand side of this window going in now um and you can see the glue marks through the glass 
and I thought, oh, it's all right, because there's trim to go around it, and the trim was thin in that place, and it's the only bit that caused any problem at all. The rest of it went on great. They all went on perfect, um, no problem at all. Like I say, nice flat windows that went on really well. Just a shame about the glue marks, but they're not highly noticeable, but they are enough. Speaking of the trim, these are the PE trim. So these are all numbered, so I know where they go um, and handed because they are handed for the side. They are. We're going to spray these in GX2 gloss black because they are gloss black. These are a pain in the ass. I'm not going to, you know, hold any punches here. What a pain in the ass. They really are. Um, they're getting glue in place with PVA glue, which makes an unholy mess on our nice clean glass. But hey, we'll deal with that when we come to it. Mirrors, clear coats dried. We'll put the PE piece in there that comes with the kit. And then there's another metallic decal to go on, as we have for the badges. And then my favorite window wipers. So, what I did on this one, I thought, you know what? I'll zoom right in today and we'll get a nice clear guide of me doing the window wipers. Which I did. And unfortunately, then moved my hand out of shot and you couldn't see a thing. So here's me cutting off the window wiper arm. And here's me peeling off the windows because the footage I had was no good. We'll get it one day. We'll get it one day. We'll get a full video of me doing those window wipers uh, in clarity. But for now, they're made. You'll see them getting sprayed in a bit. I still hate the things. They're a pain in the ass, um, But they are made. So we need to peel off the covers now for the glass in preparation for putting these window yep. trims on. So... Glass is off, nice and clean. It does immediately attract dust, which is a bit of a nightmare. So you just see me rubbing off anything uh, that we don't want there, any hairs or what have you. We've got some PVA glue, and we're going to make an unholy mess on these windows now. Even though we applied as little PVA glue as we possibly could, it creates a hell of a mess. It really does. And it took quite a bit of cleanup, but some water of some description uh, and clean cotton buds, changing them regularly, soon clean them up, and they look good in the end. But yeah, they were a bit tricky to do, uh, and a little bit of a pain in the backside. So I've got a sticky, um, what are these called? Let me have a look. From Scale Production, they are called Gravit Sticks. Uh, I couldn't find a UMP pickup pencil. I've got no idea where mine's gone. It's vanished. This is a, an adhesive little stick that worked quite well. It did leave a bit of residue behind if you were a bit rough, but it was handy for picking up these parts. So we're popping it in place, letting the PVA go grab it, removing the excess, which immediately goes all over the glass. Um, and then, yeah, go around, do them all, which uh, did take a little bit of time to do, but they're all on. I did skip it because it would have taken forever to go through. Uh, clean them up with some uh, water, cotton buds, and then a cloth at the end, and they all went on. So they weren't too bad, really. Just a bit of a pain, really. Door handles, uh, front and rears, uh, you've got to pay attention to which one's which. We've got some nice tacky glue and glaze to get those in place. And then the shark fin antenna for the roof as well. A little bit of glue and glaze to hold that in. So obviously there's four door handles. Make sure you get all those in place. And the antenna for the roof. Fun fact, we break this at the end. Yes, I break the roof antenna. We fix it, but it gets broken. You'll see in a little bit. Because I'm a prat. How good is that blue looking? It's darker. It is darker in real life, but the blue looks good. And the clear coat looks fantastic. It really does. Mirrors. Dice with death here. I've got some... Uh, uh, Bob Smith, CA glue. If you're going to CA glue mirrors on, you've got to make sure you get them in the right place the first time round. And thankfully we did. Uh, but they can be a bit of a pig. So there we go. That's in. Held in place. The worst thing you can do is drop them and it leave a nice streak down the side of the car. But we've got both of those glued in place. We've got the metallic Audi badge for the back applied exactly the same as the steering wheel was. So it's uh, rubbed over the back and then the plastic peeled off in place. And then the RS4 logo is a metallic decal. So yeah, water slide decal, metallic. So just applied and all the moisture removed. I don't put solutions on these. I find I don't necessarily need them. They're very, very adhesive anyway. And uh, they're looking good. Very, very nice. Starts to bring the back end alive as well. Now the number plate, it comes with a decal for the number plate and a number plate um, PE plate for it as well, which looked all right. But it also had these very pretty silver Audi number plates. And I thought, you know, they look really good. So I used some double-sided tape. Uh, we used our seat belts to glue it in place. And I think they look really good. 
Um, there's obviously one for the front and back. I didn't put it on the front because it kind of ruins the look a little bit. But I put it on the back to fill that ugly spot in between the boot lid and the bumper. I thought it looked really good. Here's the god awful window wipers. So assembled. These ones actually assembled up really well. They did go together really well. Um, it's just sat lost all the footage. It's probably the most perfect pair I've ever made. And the footage was completely unusable. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. We will get them one day. But they get a couple of coats of LP5 here. Um, no need for primer. Nothing's going to be going on with these. They're going to be glued in place. And LP5 is a lacquer anyway. So it'll, it'll get on there just fine. So just a couple of coats of LP5. But like I say, yeah. Probably the most perfect P window wipers I've ever made before. So yes. And then gluing them in place. We've got one in place. Obviously it's a left hand drive car. So be aware which way they sweep. Um, we're going to put a little bit of tacky glue and glaze. There's no locating points on the body for them or under there. So a little bit of glue and glaze. Put a dab so it gets on the bottom of the windscreen. Hold it where you want it. And then leave it to dry for some time. And there we go. That's it finished. Now the final touch is a UMP spray uh, wax. The shine. So we put a little bit on all of our clean cotton cloths. And we gently, and I mean gently, because it's so easy to rip off those window wipers. Ask me how I know. Um, go around and put a light coat of this down. And you'll see it go on as kind of a hazy liquid. Let it dry. I've got a glove on for a reason. So that I don't go putting fingerprints everywhere again. And it doesn't need any abrasive or anything. It just needs to haze up this. It's, it's just a shine liquid. And once it's... Um, it's dried, it just buffs off to a nice high shine. It's like a detail spray is what it is. And it works very well. I'm not a fan of the wax. I know we sell the wax and a lot of people use it. Um, I like the shine spray. I think it's a quicker, easy way of doing it. Each to their own. But just be very careful and gentle, uh, especially around that antenna on the roof, because as you're going to see in a second, I'm going to break it. Uh, as you can see, we've got faults in the roof. I'm open and honest about my modeling. It's not perfect. It's as good as I was willing to go, as far as I was willing to go. Um, but with a nice clean cotton cloth now, we can go around and clean up all that. Are you ready? That antenna is going to go broke any second now. Get ready. Get ready for it. It's going to go. It's going to go. We're just going to buff this until we get rid of any residue. Uh, and as you can see, look, I've snapped it off. I know where it is. It's on the side there. Uh, but we're going to go around and buff all this up. Look at that shine. Absolutely beautiful. Really is stunning. Beautiful blue. Glad I chose it. Wait till you see the real colour at end. It, it is a much nicer blue. Um, this this colour would have been fantastic all by itself. Uh, but the, dark, the darker blue is the colour I was aiming for, which was the pictures I saw. But as you can see, our UMP shine really does add a nice shine to the kit. And with that broken antenna, just the smallest yabba dabba do of Bob Smith's odorless glue. Because it broke off cleanly, because it's resin. I can let you glue it in place and you'll never see the join. And there we go. That's that done. And here we are. There she is. You can say it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Happy with that paint job. Exhaust look good. Front end looks good. Side looks good. I'm happy with this. And we've got some nice pictures of it as well. So this is the true color that I see. This darker blue. And this is the color I wanted from the very start. So beautiful color. It looks so aggressive on those wheels, big, aggressive, black, gloss black wheels. And these are just a beautiful weapon of a car. I love this shot of it side on. Really does look pretty. Um, and as you can see, under different lights at different angles, it goes a slightly darker blue. And then under the light of my photo booth with no background, it goes a slightly lighter blue again. So this is probably more the true representation of its color, this color here. A little bit darker with the camera. The video shows and a little bit lighter than what the uh, the background shows, but it's wonderful. It came out really well. This one, so this was primed in Tamiya White Primer, base coated in a mix of Tamiya TS23 and 44. It was mixed to I. Uh, we've done a Tamiya black gray, dark gray panel line wash, uh, some Tamiya carbon decals to the rear roof spoiler, the roof rails, the mirrors, the front grille rear diffuser and front splitter 2k gravity clear the wheels we did in gx2 gloss black and they were glossed again as well brake calipers were done in uh brembo red from uh zero paints zero paints carbon for the disc interior was done in lp5 black and uh my own flocking 
material for the interior and then we polished it all up with the UMP polish system and uh, I'm happy with this. I am happy with it. It's come out really well. It was a nice quick build of these great alpha model kits and I'm looking forward as always to doing my next one. So what's next? Hmm. Okay, there we go. That's it. She's done. And uh, I think that came out quite well. Beautiful car. Very happy with that color. It was almost the exact color I envisioned. It, it came out really well. And I'm happy with how that looked. Um, not perfect. I'm the first one to admit my models aren't perfect. Um, there's a few flaws on it. But hey, it can't be perfect, can we? Like I say, I enjoy this hobby for the hobby itself. Not striving for complete perfection. I don't show my models. I don't compete. I build them for yours and mine enjoyment um, and to show on ISM and what have you. So um, I get more enjoyment out of knowing I'm not going to destroy my beautiful clear coat and have to redo it rather than push in and trying to completely get rid of a flaw in the paintwork. If you wish to do that, fair play to you. But yeah, like I say, I'm happy with the way I do things. Yeah, and I'm happy with it. Glad how it turned out. It come well. Uh, another beautiful Alpha Models kit. We were chatting about these the other day and saying that the kits without an engine like this, which are a lesser par count kit, they should be priced a little bit cheaper. I think these kits should be around the £130 mark um, because the Lamborghini, the Porsche, some of the Ferraris have got, they've all got engines in them. It's extra parts that you get with the kit. And when they haven't got them like this, you're getting less for your money as such. So let me know your thoughts at the end of the video as well as maybe something else I might have asked. In between the video possibly somewhere um let me know your thoughts on the price point they're not they are expensive and a few people have come to go oh the 2d for what they are i can see your views totally but it's an audi rs4 and you can't get anyone from elsewhere so for me that's the main selling point the resin is unbelievable quality and you can build a beautiful model with quite relative ease and they just announced the lamborghini urus and more importantly the audi rs6 is coming out as well so i'll we'll have one of those and i found the perfect color for that as well which we'll discuss later so there we go let's build number i've lost track now is it 11 10 11 12 i can't remember now i've forgotten um done so yeah hope you enjoyed that one it's a quick one so it's always a good mojo builder and it looks very nice in the display case looks very very pretty very very happy with that one um and we get to choose a new build now. I've got a few to choose from. I'm probably going to do a bench update. I've got a few things to rearrange in here. Picked up some nice, off on a tangent as usual, artwork for the cave. Look at that, Mark 2 Hours 2000. Lovely. Uh, and a BMW M3. Oh, she's pretty, isn't she? Very pretty. So I'm going to rearrange a few things down the back end there um, and get that done. I've got a couple of videos to get up. Got some reviews I want to do as well. I need to do some intros for the live shows. Uh, so I've got a few admin things to do over the past next few days. But I'll probably do a bench update as a formality for this. I always do one when I finish a kit. We can have a little bit of a chat. And I've got a few ideas for builds. And you can help me pick one. Or you can help me pick one and I'll have to pick something completely different. But there's three. Three. There's three. Three choices possibly coming up. So uh, yeah, you can help me pick one. And we can get it done. So there we go. As always, as I said at the beginning, if you want to support these videos, there's a Patreon me link down below. You get two week early access on the videos. There's lots of them there. Trust me, there's always four or five, six that aren't on ISM um, over the two weeks. So you do get early access on them. And you also support and keep these videos going because I couldn't do this without your support at all. Uh, and of course, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, click the bell notification, subscribe, and leave a comment as well. Comments are massively important to content creators. It spares them on with the build. So take the time to leave a comment, not just on my videos, on others as well. Uh, and of course, check all the links in the description down below, including my Styrene and Machine link as well, which is down there. There's links to everything down there, including all the products I use in my videos, which you can find uh, on the forum. And there we go. So looking forward to picking a new project. The Lance is still there. I'm still waiting on my, my roll cage replacement parts, which haven't turned up yet. Five weeks it's been now. So still waiting on that. Uh, I might 2K it this week at some point. But I want the roll cage so I can continue on with the direction I was going, which was getting the interior done. I don't want to jump ahead a step, then jump back, because it loses its continuity on the videos. But I'm also eager to get back to it as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes over the next few days. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. Oh, no, no, no. 
And if you haven't seen the 037 review, you need to go and have a look at that because that's Munster as well. There we go. Thanks for watching today. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Question. Do I have a question? I think I asked it, didn't I? I believe I did. I think I asked a question. I forget. So there's the, there's the question. Did I ask a question? Let me know. Enjoy the rest of the night, everyone. Bye-bye.